Once more, Vision Pro is getting even better with its latest update. I'm so excited to tell you about it and why this is still just the beginning. Before we get into this, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. I'm not naive. I know most of you watching this don't have or use a Vision Pro. But to me, it's just really interesting to see how much this has evolved since its launch barely a year ago. This week, Apple released a bunch of new software updates, the biggest of which was iOS 18.4, which had dozens of new features and changes. If you want to know more about that, you can check out the whole video that I did, and I've linked it here for you. Alongside that update, we also got Vision OS 2.4, which is what I'm breaking down in this video. To start, it got a whole new app, the Spatial Gallery. I think, like with Apple Watch, Apple is discovering how people use Vision Pro. For me, and what I've heard from other users, is that productivity by mirroring your Mac and consuming content are the two primary use cases right now. Spatial Gallery lends itself to the latter, highlighting spatial content from a variety of sources. You can swipe through and see all sorts of things, and you can even save some to your favorites for a dedicated library. There's stuff from Apple, like behind the scenes shots of Severance, Red Bull, and even actual users. Like this insane underwater coral shot that was taken on an iPhone. Right now, I feel like this app could do more. I love it, but it's not updated nearly enough to check back regularly. Hopefully Apple does just that and makes it even more useful. The biggest change though, is the inclusion of Apple Intelligence. And before you bail ship just on that, hear me out. Apple Intelligence as a term may already be overused at this point, but this blanket term includes a ton of useful new features. Of course, it has the big ones, right? Writing tools. If you're writing content at all, you can proofread it, have it rewrite it for you with different tones, you can also have it generate whole content and stories or, or letters for you too, even tapping into ChatGPT for it. ChatGPT can be used to answer more complex questions with Siri too. There is Image Playground to generate images, even in the newly added Sketch style that was also part of iOS and macOS updates that rolled out. There's Image Wand in Notes, Genmoji while messaging, and Smart Reply for both mail and messages. Here are my favorites though. Priority notifications. This automatically puts the most important notification at the top of Notification Center. That way they don't get buried, which is hugely important if you get a lot of notifications. I also really like that this doesn't even feel like an AI feature. People probably don't even realize it's part of Apple intelligence, but it is. iPad is an incredibly cool slab of metal and glass that Years later, I still fawn over, and a lot of the time, I like it as is, with no case. But with the right accessories, you can take it even further. Like when I'm working on a shoot outside, I get nervous and I want to add some sort of protection. Like the ESR flip case with a magnetic Apple Pencil holder. I can prop it up into portrait view to read my notes or scenes, or I can use the adjustable stand and back for watching content or drawing. All for 22 bucks. For ultimate productivity, there is the ESR Rebound case that may top Apple's Magic Keyboard. The back magnetically necks for easy removal and a cool hovering effect. There's a large multi-touch trackpad with gesture support and backlit keys, something even Apple's doesn't have this time around. Finally, I may have found my favorite third-party stylus. The ESR Geo Pencil is comparable to Apple Pencil Pro, but for only $29 has palm rejection, tilt sensitivity, and a fine 1.5 millimeter tip, a battery display, and a cool shortcut button for automations. Best of all, it supports the Apple Find My app, so you'll never lose it. If you want to check any of these out, I put links in the description. I also love the integrations into photos. You can now use natural language search to look for photos, which works really well, a lot better than before. Again, it doesn't necessarily feel like an Apple intelligence feature, but it is. It's pretty cool to search for a photo and then convert it into spatial. Plus, it can create a movie for you. I've been using this a ton to look back with photos, so it's really nice to be able to use Apple intelligence to make these movies that are, are more immersive and have chapters and stuff. 
Finally, there are notification summaries. These use the AI to give you a general idea of what the notification was. Long text, news stories, third-party apps. These are great on iPhone, mostly, and uh, it's perfect having them here on Vision Pro 2. Especially when I won't have to get into something, I can get a good summary before having to actually do anything. Other small things include mail summaries, priority mail inbox, and more. I also always love how well Apple's products work together. We see that on display with Apple Vision Pro when it extends your Mac's display or automatically enabling optical ID when your iPhone is nearby. With this update, Apple's also putting a new Vision Pro app automatically on your iPhone. This gives you basic information on your Vision Pro, things like the serial number. It also lets you find more content, like new apps or videos to watch. The idea is you can get an alert on your iPhone that there's something new on Vision Pro. Not only is that just helpful, but it can also help encourage users to put on their headsets even more. Plus, there's this new revamped guest mode process. So if you go into the optical ID and passcode settings on your Vision Pro, you can enable guest mode automatically with certain nearby devices. For me, I've enabled it here on my 16 Pro, but I could do it on like my iPad mini or full-size iPad as well. When someone puts on your Vision Pro, if it doesn't recognize their eyes as yours, it'll ask them to enable guest mode. They'll press the digital crown to say yes, and that will cause a modal to appear on your iPhone. You can then authorize guest mode and choose which apps they have access to. This is so much better than the original flow, where the owner would have to put on the headset first, log in, go to control center, enable it, you had to set everything there, so it had a timer on it, and then you take it off and put the other person back on. It was a lot. This will also just allow people to demo this so much more easily, which I still do after all this time. With Vision OS 2.4, we got a slew of system-wide changes. Emphasis on new spatial content, Apple intelligence features, and more integration with your other Apple devices. Not to mention what came before this. Since launch, we got wide and ultra-wide views for mirroring your Mac monitor. Lossless audio with AirPods Pro, with a special, like, almost Wi-Fi-like direct connection. We got the ability to convert your own photos into spatial photos that work super well. We got a ton of new spatial content, like the recent Metallica concert, the new Yankee experience coming out, and a short film that makes it feel like you're almost trapped in a submarine a new gesture and control center for home view and adjusting volume and settings. We got the Bora Bora Beach environment, which is still to this day absolutely one of my favorites. And so much more. And again, barely a year later, this still feels like a brand new device. This summer, we will be getting our first look at Vision OS 3. Bloomberg has called Vision OS 3 a feature-packed release, and I am so freaking excited for it. We've heard rumblings of more UI refinement, additional native apps, and possibly even support for VR gaming controllers. There will be no second gen Vision Pro this year, which to me is only a good thing. It means Apple is happy with the capabilities of the Vision Pro hardware to keep supporting new features like we've been getting so far. I feel like my investment into Vision Pro is more worth it when there wasn't a new model coming a year later. Again, I know Vision Pro isn't a mass market success and rumors on subsequent models have been all over the place. As of now, it sounds like a new Vision Pro is coming 2026, maybe 2027, and we've seen how much Apple has continued to innovate and iterate with the Vision OS software. Everyone can have their opinions on Vision Pro, but I love it. I really do, and I think this update was another great milestone for the product, and I'm beyond excited to see what comes next. If you guys want to come along for the ride and see what Apple has coming up next, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.